Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we're back again with another edition of uh, Felon's Talk. And John Greshner's on the phone here. And we're going to talk about this guy, Mike Clacker. Yeah, Mike Clacker. His name's Lawrence Clacker, but he went by Mike. He, uh, Mike, Mike, come, well, he was, he was, uh, he was a Jew, come from a Jewish family. They got money and stuff down in Florida. And, uh, him and a partner just came up from South Florida, went into uh, New Orleans. They had, I don't know, a couple keys, two, three keys of, of Coke, you know, a Mac 10 with a, a, a squeezer on the end, all that. They went into a, a hotel and uh, got a, a room, and then in the ventilator, they put the dope in the, in the Mac in the, in the ventilators in the, in the air vent. Right. And they were out doing some stuff, taking some, because they were down there to sell the shit in uh, New Orleans. Anyhow, they got hemmed up. Something happened. I forget the particulars of it. Something happened. The cops got out. I think their, his partner got shot. I don't I don't know if he got killed. I don't think he got killed. I think he may even be down in Louisiana State Pen at that time, anyhow, maybe Angola or something. Anyhow, <coughs> Mike uh, went on a medical trip uh, from, the, from the Paris jail and uh, he, in, he went to, uh, he told the cop he had to use the bathroom. He got in the bathroom, jumped the cop, and uh, got away from the cop, got out through a window, and escaped. Right. And he got injured when he ran out of there, either through the glass or he was wounded or something, but it wasn't that bad. And he ran for two or three days, and uh, they ended up catching him. <clears throat> so he ended up getting some uh, more charges and all that for that and got some a federal time and, and all that. And I think he got some federal time for the Mac. It may have been like a you know machine gun or whatever. So he come in the feds. He landed in Leavenworth, and um, Mike was always you know he was he was one of these guys that was psychologically fucking driven. He drove all the time, always trying to get away, right? Mm -hmm. Which isn't a bad trait. I mean you know it's actually a healthy trait trying to get the fuck out of a cage, right? Yeah. So he. Uh, he tried to get away from Leavenworth, got busted, ended up getting sent to uh, Marion. He didn't go to uh, the control unit. He just went to the line at Marion. Right. He ended up over in D Block with us. And <coughs> he, uh, him and Barry was cool. Me and, me and Mike was cool. Mike was, always, it was really good shape, always exercising all the time because he had all that ex excess energy, right? And, uh, he was kind of hanging around with uh, Kevin Roach, who turned out to be the informant. Right. And uh, so, anyhow, Barry told me, man, why don't you look at that guy, talk to him, see what you think. So I went and talked to him, explained some things to him. And Mike was trying to get with the tip, so he was with it, but also it was, you know, what he could get with it about, you know, that could help him get on down the road, right? Right. Yeah. So he was in, uh, he was in uh, cell 18 on A range. And I was in cell 18 on C range, uh, same side. And uh, he uh, he got some saw blades. He sawed some uh, pieces off the bottom of, of, of the, the cell. You know, the, the cells at Marion are bars. And on the bottom of the piece was cut off. It was doctored up and all that. Anyhow, and there was a few other little things done and all that. Anyhow, you know, he uh, so... Uh, he was made. He was. He did his little bullet the year thing and all that. He was doing everything right, everything. And uh, but he's always looking on trying to. You know, he's with that hook and ladder stuff. He's always trying to get on. Right. So he gets moved on from uh, from the D block into the step down program, and he's in C block. Now he's and made he got now, right? A little piece of uh, saw blade in his tennis shoe. Hold up. So he's over in the I unit in the hole. You know, I'm investigating. Wasn't no big thing. He's just got you know. A, a fucking uh, ticket. He's going to do a little jolt this very second and come back up. So in the meantime, uh, I moved down to his cell on A18. And I'm living there and I'm walking around on uh, the yard, me and my buddy Nicky Scarfo. And the uh, fuck cops come say, hey, crash around. I'm cuff up. They take me to IU to the hole. They find the piece underneath his uh, bar where it was cut off. It was down. Or 
work stuff and then covered up with acrylic paints and all that shit. So they took all the acrylic paints out of the joint. All the our teams were sucked up about that, but hey, whatever, right? So everybody does their own type of artwork, right? Yeah. So anyhow, uh, I'm over there and they're trying to give me, they, they got my cell on C18 quarantine for about six months. They're tearing shit up. They got air hammers in it. They're looking for all kinds of shit. They don't find nothing. It was based on that, that when you're in the supermaxes and the high security uh, joints like the control units and all that, every 60 days you get moved. Right. No, based on my shit there. So they may move you next door, then 60 days later move you back, but every 60 days you get moved. That was based on all that shit. Anyhow, so I tell Mike what happens, and he says, don't worry about it. He says, I got it, because they're trying to send me back to the control unit. <laughs> they don't want me on the line. They're trying to put me back in the shoe, because I maxed out my whole bit, right? And uh, in the uh, control unit, I just did like five years or six years uh, down there on, on that last jolt. So anyhow, Mike comes up and takes case. Now, McElmary was the DHO at that time. So he's accusing them when I call him and says, well, there's a question I make you do this. He said, he carries a lot of weight out in this line. And said, Mike's saying, nah, fuck no, it's my shit. I'm the one that did it. So they hadn't let me out at all. So anyhow, Mike uh, comes back to the fucking unit. He's fucking uh, trapped and all. He got kicked out of the, the pre-release thing, uh, the step-down program. And when they shoot us all, and then he gets, uh, but he doesn't go into D-block. He's or F block. Well, wire comes in on a dude, a Dusty, Dusty Burkett. Yeah. Oh, I think. Yeah, Arizona or Nevada or one of them spots down there. He's saying it'd be an Aryan warrior. Well, it turns out he used to be out in the California pens years ago. And uh, he gave up some ammunition, some 9 millimeter rounds. So, but I didn't know that at first. So I run into a dude named uh, Cato some youngster named Cato that come in from an FCI and he's tripping because he's been in an FCI claim and he was praying. Now he's tripping. Right. And he tells me he's over there with Dusty and Dusty's tripping because he said, Cato says Dusty and Spanky had some words about something. So I told him, tell Dusty, listen, they just had some words. Tell them to shut the fuck up, stop all that shit. And I can straighten it up. But I didn't know about the ammunition and shit at that time. Right. So the thing is, is, um, uh, Cato gets back out and tells Dusty, just relax, you're going to be okay and all that. Well, in the meantime, we find out about the ammunition and shit. So Mike's over there in the block room. So Mike gets a piece, and he goes and, uh, and he hits uh, Dusty with it. You know, he hits him in the throat a few times, stuff like that. So Mike gets locked up for him. Dusty tells him in his FBI 302 forms. What? That fucking John, he said, I was all right. He set me up and fucking Mike fucking came up and fucking tried to cut my throat, stab me in the neck and all this shit. So the thing is, is uh, I really didn't set him up. I didn't know about the ammunition at that time. He ain't going to straighten that shit up. So anyhow, Mike goes to the control unit. And I see him down in the control unit. And he's down in the control unit doing his stuff, you know, exercising all and trying to, you know, always tripping on, you know, trying to get away. In fact, before we... He ended up down in the control unit. We were all in I unit together. He was down there for the, the stabbing on Dusty Paquette. And uh, I was down there on that fucking uh, air piracy case. And we run into some dudes coming in from uh, Southern California. They had just went to a trip where they, they took a hostage down in the, uh, the MCC down there. They had to bring an FBI fucking a SWAT team to throw flashbangs and all this shit, get them loose. Anyhow, they're talking about going back down that way or back down to South Florida. And Mike's trying to get with that. And these guys, I'm kind of hooked up with these dudes. I know these guys. So he's trying to work that. Anyhow, we all end up down in the control unit together. So do these other guys for this hostage station thing down in uh, uh, San Diego. So anyhow, Mike is tripping all the time. And when we were over in high unit, he had told me one day when we were out in a little three rec cases out there, mm -hmm. the big rec case, he says, man, he says, uh, you know, because he gets claustrophobic, he, he, like the walls are squeezing out. Mm. You know, he's one of them guys, man, that uh, he has a hard time doing that time, man. And uh, the, the deeper you go into solitary, the more it fucking, it fucks you up, right? He should have never even been in solitary. Right. You know, they should make accommodations like they do in California. In California, if somebody's got a pre-existing, like psych psychological defect in some capacity, they don't put them in the shoes. They put them in... Uh, 
shoes, but they're not, you know, security housing. You know, it's like Pelican Bay, Corcoran, Ashby, Max, and all. They got their own little spots where they go. You're still locked up and all that, but it, it doesn't put those psychological stressors on you like that. So anyhow, we all get sent down to uh, the ATX from the control unit at Marion, and we go into the shoe. We're opening up the shoe and uh, fucking uh, the ATX so, uh, in Florence over here. Now, there was a picture, a thing on, uh, that they did on the ATX that showed kind of a shaky black and white picture of a, of a, of a, like a goon squad, a sort team walking Mike in. They found a hacksaw blade on him when he was going into the, uh, Florence hmm. over there. And he was looking back over his shoulder, kind of like over his right shoulder back at the camera and back at the viewer. And it's kind of a grainy black. That's one of the last photographs I ever had of him. Right. So he goes in, and uh, he's down there in the fucking uh, uh, shoe with me and all that. And he makes an admission to me when he's down there in uh, the shoe. He's getting ready to get out of the control unit in the ATX. But he makes an admission to me that he, he said too much during one of the 30-day reviews. So he's telling me. He, he said something to the police about something he shouldn't have been talking about. So he's tripping on that. Wow. So he gets out to the main line, and he's out there burying them, and, and they, they're trying to make some fucking pieces and all that. This is before they had the, the ADX and all, or the, the uh, A-ranges were out on the main line where they turned the A-ranges, the upper and lower tiers on A-ranges and all the general population blocks into a uh, tip, you know, for gangs and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. So... Mike's cutting out a fucking piece on the top of the uh, plexiglass uh, uh, light fixture. He's cutting it out. And they're cutting fucking weapons out and all this and that. Well, it turns out he drops a fucking kite in on all this stuff. Oh, wow. So then he gets moved, and he ain't getting no action on it. But this, these are, this is like, this is like fucking, this is really like psychological desperation on this guy's part. Right. His walls are, are squeezing on him, making him suicidal, right? So, but he's paranoid happened, now because he says so. And he fucked around and uh, it just became too much for him. And uh, he ended up fucking uh, taking a razor, cutting himself all up, cutting his arms up, cutting him in, and then hanging himself. And that's what happened with Mike. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. He killed that's himself. How he, he should have never been in the motherfucking uh, them deep slammers like that. Yeah. And you know he was just a dude, man, that uh, come from a good family, family with money. He's telling me about how he'd be riding up the intercoastal waterway in his fucking boat. Wow. You know the whole trip, right? Hmm. And uh, really good shape, a good looking guy. Fucking, you know, he just uh, he got caught, man. Got caught running some of that cocaine. He had that fucking gun, and then, you know, and all that, and he got caught up, man, and uh, he just never made it out the other side, man. Wow. You know what I mean? Once he got going in deeper and deeper, he never made it out the other side. But that's what happened with Mike. So basically, he was, he was brand, right? He did, he, he was... He yeah, did. he got made brand, yeah. Okay, so... Yeah. And then he, he put in, you know, that little bit of work with Dusty, Dusty uh, Burkett, and... Uh, you know, ended up going downtown and getting the case on it. Wow. Everything. I mean, he was doing it the right thing, everything right all along. Right. You know, in that world, he was doing the right thing. But uh, he just had this deeper underlying psychological shit where, uh, you know, some people can't handle that deep solitary, right? Yeah. You know? So what he got... <laughs> they know. He, hey, they know. Hey, 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 they know. The government knows. Uh, the effects of that on people. I mean, it goes all the way back to your state there, the Quakers with the penitentiaries, their right. whole trip, right? That whole solitary thing, where they, that's where the term penitentiary came up. Go in there and do your penance, they give you a Bible and put you in solitary. All them motherfuckers were bugging out, right? Yeah. <laughs> Losing their damn mind. So they've known for hundreds of years the effects of solitary like that. So Even in, in prison of, uh, prisoner of war camps, Koreas and all that, how to break motherfuckers down, turn them into collaborators, use those things on them, psychological stressors to make them, push them into states of des desperation. So let me um, ask like you a question, bro. You know, those, hey, those deep states that's out there are like waterboarding the mind. It's like trying to suffocate the mind, right? Yeah. And some people can't handle it, man. You know, and uh, 
they, uh, a lot of people can't. Nobody goes through that uh, unaffected. I mean, nobody goes through life unaffected. You carry all the imprints with you. But those deep, deep uh, sensory deprived uh, um, coolers way, way down underground, man, a lot of people can't handle them. They start losing it. Okay, but let and me ask I, you a question. The government knows that. Okay, so he said when, 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 he, when, he, when he stabbed that boy, uh, Dusty Burkett, he thought y'all set him up or something? No, no, no. He no, he, he did what he was supposed to do. The work got over to him. He's got to move on his too. This dude was wanted from California. Right. Who where said? Where he, uh, he gave up some, there were some nine millimeter rounds buried on a yard out there that belonged to the fellas. Oh, wow. And he gave them up and, and got out of that fucking, uh, that joint, wherever he was at. I think it was in Quentin or something. But he actually gave up some fucking ammunition on, out there. Because back in the days out in California, people could send in, your family could send in 30 pound quarterly packages, right? Right. And, you know, people were moving a lot of shit, a lot of dope, a lot of ammo, a lot of everything. But then, you know how it is, motherfuckers start getting too loose with it. They'd send you a can of planters, peanuts, or something uh, filled with fucking, uh, you know, 38 rounds in their, uh, the fucking can of peanuts. Ways too much. Them fucking peanuts don't weigh that much, right. and they're rattling around in there. It ain't sound like a peanut. It's metal on metal, man. They got ammunition rolling, so they end up busting fucking shit, right? Well, what That's what about? They ended up going to vendors and stuff out there. Well, what about the fucking? Yeah. Uh, what about the uh, the poison that Barry was getting in or something? Barry was supposed to be getting in. Yeah, some... you're talking about cyanide. Cyanide, yeah. What the fuck was he doing yeah, with that? Cyanide, yeah, well, cyanide was coming off the coast. That's used in uh, chrome plating on motorcycles and all that shit. Right, but how? How? What did he get and, it uh, in for? That was, that was, except for over in the ADX. Now the over in the ADX, we had some fucking ammunition over there, uh, and we had some uh, some toxins over there. But the toxins over there it was cyanide too. But it's called compound ten eighty. It's Man, I, I had some. Like I had some twenty twos. Shoot, shoot, shoot some pellet of cyanide in a coyote's mouth or something when he's fucking with shit, right? So what did, what's he going to do know. with this fucking cyanide? What was his plans for that, Barry? What was he What was he planning on Plan. doing? Kill motherfuckers. How? I mean, how's he going to get into their food or something? Yeah, in food, yeah. In food, in with dope, whatever. You know, cyanide, that's why... Here's what you do when you're in environments, legal environments, when you know there's toxins in there. Uh, whenever you're eating... Always look at your nail beds. If you're white, look at your nail beds on your fingernails and stuff. Right. If it starts turning blue or blue tints, it's called cyanosis. You know, you've been poisoned with cyanide. Mm -hmm. And and the way cyanide works is it goes into your system and it uh, attaches on the red blood cells on the receptor sites that normally take in the oxygen from the lungs, the bronchial passages and the alveoles that takes the oxygen in and transfers into your blood and it transfers to the red blood cells, the receptor sites, then they carry it to the muscles, through the bloodstreams, and all that, and oxygen, oxygenates your system. So the cyanide blocks those receptor sites, so you can breathe. It's like you're breathing, everything's cool, but you aren't getting no oxygen, you're getting oxygen stuff, that's why you start turning blue. Mm -hmm. And then finally you just fall off from oxygen deprivation, and you, you fucking die. That's like the... In Quentin, man, uh, back in the days, the gas chamber was cyanide. Right, right. And yeah, I wonder why he would. Breathing. You have one minute left. I just but, uh, wonder why he would. No I just wonder why he would want to get fucking cyanide instead of getting some dope in that motherfucker. Well, cyanide's a bad thing. You're better off with with a hydrolyzing agent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because hydro the hydrolyzing agents break down in, in, in your system. Then they got to do different spectral analysis and all that. Uh, to, to get it because it, it doesn't turn up like cyanide. Cyanide will turn up blood toxicology. It's a cyanide poisoning. Yeah. We're going to get cut off here. It'll, get, it'll kill you really quick, too, cyanide, man. It, you know, cyanide. Will, uh, what? I mean, if, if, if you take, if you get put cyanide in somebody's hamburger or something, there was a guy, man, that fucking. Do uh, you want me to call you back? I mean. Want to call you back yeah, right now? Yeah, go ahead. Call me back. The caller has hung up. Anyway, uh, that dude who, uh, they used to call him the fucking, uh, what the fuck was his name? Uh, the Ice Man. He was giving people, he was getting cyanide, right? 
and putting it in their food and shit, and they would, boom, they'd have a, a men's heart attack right away, you know? And, uh, yeah, it was fucking crazy, man. Um, so Barry Mills is fucking, <laughs> gets cyanide into the fucking penitentiary. Tell me this motherfucker ain't crazy. You know what I mean? Tell me he ain't a homicidal fucking maniac, man. The fuck? There we go. You call from John. An incarcerated individual at Arkansas Valley Correctional Facility. This call is not private. It will be recorded and may be monitored. If you believe this should be a private call, please hang up and follow facility instructions to register this number as a private number. To accept this free call, press 1. To refuse the this fuck free is call, this press damn thing? 2. If you would like to permanently block your number from receiving calls from this facility, press 6. Thank you for using Secure it. You may start the conversation now. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. Here's, here's the problem with that. I mean, you, you can do it and take care of business, but then they're going to know that the dude was... Uh, you know, murder. They're going to know it was a homicide. Uh, if you're using any type of toxins. That's why, if, you know, I mean, if you're going to do something like that, you're better off just uh, doing a hot shot. Or, uh, like I say, if you're going to actually use a, an actual toxin, uh, you'd want a, one that's a hydro, hydrolyzing agent that breaks down in the body. Yeah. So what it'll do is, is when they do spectral analysis with the blood or something, they're looking deeper. Um, if there's some suspicious things about the death or something, and they're going to run deeper makes on, on the blood and the tissue samples and all that, they do spectral analysis on all the different chemicals in the blood. And different, depending on the types of hydrolyzed agents, they'll give different spikes, uh, high spikes in the analysis of the graph readouts. But the thing is, is uh, it'll look like, you know, you ate too much of this or that that had this type of chemical in it or that type of chemical, but the actual toxin itself breaks down. So it doesn't turn up like cyanide. Cyanide is going to turn up as cyanide. In your right, system. right. Cyanide you poisoning, I mean? yeah. I was thinking about the guy who, uh, the, the Iceman. You heard of the Iceman? He's big, you know, you've seen that on TV, haven't you? Or, he, I heard about that. Yeah, so the guy was using cyanide, right? And he was killing people. He was putting yeah. in their hamburgers and shit like this. You know, they'd, they'd have an immense heart attack immediately, you know, and die right away. And uh, Well, was, they died they die from oxygen uh, deprivation. Well, yeah, but oxygen brought on by cyanide poisoning. Yeah, I, yeah, I get it. Um I'm just, I heard Barry was getting cyanide into Marion before he ever got to. Well, he did, but he got he got it got busted. See, he got it busted when he was uh, uh, he was in C the step down unit C block, and a card came in, you know, like a birthday card, or whatever. But it was one that had more layers to it. Okay. And they busted some cyanide one of them, huh. and. Uh, he got kicked out of the foot, but it's interesting because he got kicked out of the uh, the step down uh, program. From C came back to D unit where I was, and uh, the uh, you know he's denying it and all this and that, and, and and he's saying, well, there's like there's this discrepancy that somebody sent it in the mail, but they couldn't prove that he was trying to get it in. You know what I mean? I mean right. it's one of them things like you know when I was in California, I seen dudes that were getting ready to get out of jail. Mm -hmm. go back to their neighborhoods but people don't want them back in the neighborhoods because they've taken over their spots and they're running shit mm -hmm. so what they do is they send in some dope in the mail with the intention of getting it busted and getting them a new case right right and then all that and then keeping them in jail longer and all that so the argument is hey if you don't have any evidence of me being on a phone or mail or whatever and uh, uh you know trying to you know authorize this to get some of this shit in whatever it is whether it's cyanide drugs or whatever if it's just sent through the mail uh anybody can send me anything right exactly you know i mean you get beef going so over they wrote them up for that shit or what I, I, well, motherfucker could send me a palm in the mail you know what i'm saying did they write them up so, for it? uh no he didn't even get a write-up they just moved from the uh the program wow uh the step-down program hmm. So, but yeah, it's like, uh, 
he, uh, you know, he had his little connect out there with the, uh, the bikers, the biker crews right. that do chrome plating and all that type shit. You know what I mean? Working on bikes. Wow. And, uh, that was his connect for the fucking cyanide. Yeah, that shit's dangerous to, uh, to, to handle if you don't know what the fuck you're doing, too. You kill yourself with that shit, you know? Well, yeah, but I mean, it's like anything else. You just, anything that you're dealing with, any toxins, uh, you always wear gloves. Uh, don't breathe fumes, you know, especially if you're interacting with uh, acids. So I remember way back in the days when I used to fuck around with, uh, you know, explosives and stuff, right? And uh, if you have like nit nitrogen-based explosives, nitroglycerins and nitroglycols, uh, TNT, trinitrated, uh, uh, toluenes and stuff like that, if you're making it or you're working with it or you're around it when it detonates, uh, you get nitrogen, a fume coming off it. It works just like nitroglycerin if you got a heart problem and expand. It's a vasodilator. So it expands your blood vessels, arteries, and all to get more blood into your system and all that. Mm. Well, it'll also give you a pounding fucking headache. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So uh, I remember back in the days uh, when, uh, like at the swamp there in Marion, when we were making, uh, so we had some other shit there too. Some, some TNT had come in and stuff like that. It was stashed. But there was, uh, uh, we had some, uh, chlorate based uh, plastic explosive and uh, it, uh, you would have to uh, you know cook the shit off it's, a, it's basically a fractional distillation it's like a, a disassociative reaction and then you got to spread it out and then uh, dry it out and then fucking uh, scrape up the crystals and then you, you, I would I would oxidize it more with uh, red phosphorus and uh, it makes it burn hotter. Yeah. It gives it a, 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 a hotter uh, detonation velocity and shit like that. So anyhow, uh, you just, you got to know what the fuck you're doing. I remember one time I was working with some uh, shit and uh, I got a, basically a, a case of pulmonary edema. It got some fluids in my lungs. So I had to make like an environment suit out of uh, trash bags. Yeah. I cut the bottom off one trash bag and taped another one on it. And then from the you know the fence in, in the cells in Marion, how you get the fence in the backs up along the wall horizontal. I would have it all covered up except for one space, and I'd have a trash bag coming off that, like a tube, an oxygen tube, into my environmental suit. So I'm inside a a fucking oxygen environmental suit with a, a higher pounds per square inch. It's a positive environment suit, so no fumes can get in there, right? Right. When I'd be cooking shit off, like making. Uh, like sulfurous acid or sulfuric acid and stuff in the cell. And it would get to stinking real bad. There'd be times Barry would send Mike, Mike Clacker, up to myself and Barry saying, man, the whole fucking cell box stinking, man. You're cooking them chemicals off. The whole thing stinking. I tell him, yeah, I'll be down here in a minute, right? Yeah. And Barry told me one time, he said, damn, brother. He said, you're up there fucking around with this shit. He says, I'm, I'm expecting to hear a massive explosion in the middle of the night or so. I tell him, no, no, listen, if I don't know what I'm doing, I ain't going to do it. Because <laughs> I learned a long time ago when I was a kid, right? Out in the streets, man, uh, we uh, we used to fucking make this shit. We'd make all kinds of stuff. And people would hire us to do stuff. And, uh, you know, so they collect uh, insurance money. Right. We were just teenagers, man. And... Uh, one time I was pounding, I used to hit these bricks of explosive. I had a big a big steel tailor shears, you know, for cutting cloth and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'd hang onto the blades and I'd just tamp on it with the handles and uh, I'd break chunks off because it was heavily oxidized. It made good underwater fuses. It burns underwater, right? Yeah. If I was making charges to, for underwater. And uh, I thought, I must have, I don't know how many of these fucking bricks I've been on. It was always good, man. This fucking time, I was sitting at a little workbench in a basement, taking around, tick, 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 hitting this motherfucker. There's a dude about eight feet away. He's got a beaker. He's doing a disassociative a, a, a chemical reaction with some other shit. And another dude over in a corner over there. We're all kids, right? This motherfucker went off. I was hitting it. It blew me up out of the chair. 
I came down, landed on the back of my head, did a back somersault on the floor. And normally when something goes off like that, you're either dead or you lost your arms, you lost your face, the front of your body's fucking shredded and all that. Mm. So I can't feel nothing. I can't see nothing. They came running over, picked me up off the floor. I really can't hear nothing. And then when I start hearing a little bit more, because it scared the shit out of them too, it was a loud bang on me. It really went off, right? Mm. It blew me up out of a chair. And I told the man, uh, do I have my arms? Because I can't feel my arms. They said, yeah, yeah, your arms and hands are good. I said, do I have my face, my eyes? Because I couldn't see nothing. They said, yeah, yeah, you got your face, your eyes are good. And it took me a while to come back from that. Uh, so I learned something there. If you don't know what fucking explosives you're fucking with, do not fuck them because it's a very unforgiving uh, process. And normally you, you miss, you blow your arms off, blow your face off and all. Another time I was cooking some shit off in a, in a, in a, a metal vat. And uh, I didn't know I should have it coated. It should be a coated vat. Uh, so you don't get chemical reactions because when you start putting acids in and doing that, you'll, and you got explosives in there, if you're making an explosive compound, it'll start forming uh, explosive metallic acid salts. They just start exuding right out of the fucking metal of the container, right? And I thought, what the fuck is that? And the other dude, an old dude came in, he said, what are you doing? I said, I'm doing this. He said, Man, you got to get out of here. These are basically explosive acid salts. These are class A explosives. Right. I didn't even know. I could blew the whole fucking joint up. So if you don't know what you're doing, don't fuck with that shit. It'll kill you. What were you guys doing you know what anyway? What were you planning to do with all that? I mean, what were time. we doing with it? Huh? Yeah. Well, well, like I said, we were being hired by adults. No, I'm talking about in prison. Go on missions. Huh? I'm talking about when you were in prison. Like, why were you... What were you what was oh, the, in prison? Yeah, what was the purpose in of In prison? That? Yeah. We're making fucking, we're making motherfucking plastic explosives. We're making guns, zip guns, and uh, motherfucking bombs and grenades. And I'm telling you, something in fucking wars we were having down there. Motherfuckers throwing grenades at each other and shooting each other and shooting at each other and yeah. down in the, in the control units and shoes. And that's where the fucking California pulled up an FBI 302 on me, saying I was in possession of fucking high explosives. And they put a fucking uh, arson thing on me on my fucking file i thought that ain't arson that's exposed they said well under california law if you have possession of explosives we can characterize it as arson so i appealed it i 602 it one i went to the next joint no i got two arson cases one's for the explosives the other one's for motherfucking lighting the dude on fire and i told him what do, you mean, what do you mean? That ain't arson. I lit the motherfucker on fire. Arson is like lighting a building on fire. They said, no, under all our law, if you light a motherfucker on fire, it's arson. So then I appealed that shit. I 602 it, and I won, and I went to another joint. Now I got three arson cases. I got the fucking explosives, lighting the dude on fire, and then they cited, like, you know, riots and shit from back in the days, lighting prisons on fire. I told them, listen, I don't think you understand this, but... You know, proper procedure and protocol during riots is we burn prisons. That's, you know, what we're supposed to do. Now, I may have been a youngster, a teenager, and all this shit, but, you know, I was taught this to school I went through. If there's a riot, you burn the prison. That's, that's just how this shit goes now. So they had, no, I got three motherfucking arson cases. It just kept getting worse, right? Right. So, anyhow, <laughs> that's what that shit was, right? You didn't know tree. You don't know treetop, do you? Yeah, big old tall motherfucker. Yeah. From uh, from where? Down south. Yeah. Yeah. Where you? Where were you with He's him? He's a southern boy. Yeah. He's where a was southern where, boy. Where's he from? Where were you with him? Where Where, where were you at? I with forget him? where he's from, but it's down south. I know. I know where he's from. Where were you? Who treetop? You, where were you together with him? What 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 prison? At Marion. Marion. In a population. Yeah. No, I was in the control unit. He came through G unit, and he was. I was talking to him. So he was on a lower tier, and I was talking to him through his window one day. Well, what, what did they send him there for? You know? Huh? What they sent him there for? I don't even know. I don't even remember. But I mean, he, he didn't go to the control unit or nothing. He was in G unit. Yeah, he was. Uh, his only his real name's Kenneth Woods, and uh, Kenneth he, Woods. Yeah. 
yeah, he's a, he's a big shot. He was a big guy in the, in the, in the, in the, in the cornbread mafia down there. You know, he was, right, right. he was one of them guys. Right. Anyway, he gave me and, uh, he gave me five twenty two bullets, uh, in Atlanta, yeah. you know, just a package with five twenty two bullets and, uh, had another guy going down the fucking, uh, to the, uh, you know, down in the, in the mill, you know, working on, you know, they, he made me a little fucking zip gun, man. Uh, right, right. And, uh, and shit. I, I had a homeboy, Clyde Johnson, that was doing the same thing. Yeah. Uh, I was going to say. He was the one that tried to escape from Alcatraz back in the days when the warden, Harold Miller, that became the warden at Marion in 1980. He used to be an old uh, cop on, on Ooh, yeah, he was a hat. Rock back in the days. Yeah. So Clyde and his crew snatched him up, tied him up, threw him in the bushes, and they hit the water, right? Hmm. So when he finally got out of Alcatraz, he was in the rest of the pens in, uh, in the federal system. And uh, he, uh, <coughs> I seen him in the, the control unit. He tried to escape from the back of a marshal car. He had a zip gun. He had some 22, live 22 rounds. It was a fake zip gun, uh, but it looked like a, a real gun. Right. And it was made out of wood and it was, you know, painted, you know, with shoe polishes and all that. It looked like, a, a, you know, it was a metal gun and all that. And what he did is he threw down on the marshals from the back seat, told the marshals to throw the fucking gun, the pistol in the back, because he had two, two marshals in front. Hmm. He's got, a, he's behind the one riding the shotgun. Right. And uh, he's got the pistol on, he tells him, throw your pistol in the back seat. There wasn't no screen in there. And he's in the back seat with this black dude. And uh, he's telling him, if you fuck around, I'm going to shoot him. And he shows him the live ammo and with one hand. And he shows him, it looks like, it's like a derringer he's got. Yeah, yeah. Pointed it back at his marshal's head. And he tells him, uh, throw your fucking gun in the back. And the, the dude threw the fucking his pistol in the back. The black dude grabbed it and hooked it and bent over it and hugged it and wouldn't let him get it. The wow. other marshal turned around. He had a 38 and shot Clyde right in the mouth. Hit him in the teeth. Ooh. Broke his jaw and knocked his teeth out, right? Wow. And, uh, yeah, and, and fucking Clyde told the dude, like, what the fuck should you do that for? I would have let you go. The dude told him, I don't, I don't, I don't have nowhere to go. What? <laughs> I don't have no family. I don't have nothing. I don't have nowhere to go. Oh, my God. That's fucked That's up. what he told him. Tell him, how about going out to the world? <laughs> it's a big world out there. There's all kinds of places. So. <laughs> That's fucked up. So, hey, you know George yeah, so, Hart, man. You know George Hart uh, was on a bus one time, right? And uh, there was this black dude who was making a lot of fucking noise, right? Screaming because something about not having no cigarettes and shit. So the fucking police put a piece of tape over his mouth and accidentally closed both of his nasal passages and the dude died. Oh, he right? killed him. Yeah, and yeah. he died, right? Yeah, and fuck. I remember hearing about that. Yeah, and then George testified against the motherfucker, man. Against the police, right? And, yeah. Uh, yeah, he got some kind of, he got some kind of play from that. I don't know. But he was doing all, he was testifying against him, all kind of fucking shit, though. You know. Who, George? Yeah, he testified against Puppet. Oh, cracker. Yeah, he testified against Puppet for, uh, for killing, uh, fucking. Buzzer? Yeah, Buzzer, yeah. That's one yeah, of them. Yeah, he started testifying against everybody. When I went up in, like, in the 70s, I believe, or 80s, uh, when Bebop called uh, me, Jackie Stancil, uh, Bosco, Steve Medina out of L.A., um, a big, tall Cuban dude, and Jack Steve Murray, Jackie Stancil's a uh, rabbi from Lewisburg, in case he called us all up there. Uh, Army was up there. Dave proved me that he was an uh, Emmy dropout. He testified against some guys. And oops, Harp was there, a cracker. Yeah. George Hart went to the motherfucking AW up there and told him that I was coming up there to kill him. That's what he told him. Where at? Where was was... I didn't even know he was up there. But they moved him from the basement in, in the Berg up to the top floor, and they put us all down in the basement. Oh, wow. Uh, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. He got paranoid. Well, yeah, he had a good reason to be He had a good reason to be paranoid then. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, fucking did yeah. He fucking, what he did was he, he says his rationale for doing all that, he said, uh, 
that the Young Turks took the, the brand over and they were going to kill him. That's yeah. exact, his, his exact statements. The youngsters, the Young Turks took the brand over and they were going to kill he, him. He said that he said he Barry kept about. trying to get, he said Barry kept writing letters uh, to him while he was in Long Park. Trying to get you him have to, one minute left. Trying to get him to, to stab, yeah. kill p different people. Uh, 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 you know, just. To, to, I was on the line with fucking Cracker. Where? At Marion in '77. Okay. And that's before uh, all this other, you know, collateral bullshit went down. So he was there. He used to. We worked in the kitchen together. He used to make the toast. I used to give him some weed and shit. He was a he was a heroin addict. Oh, he loved it. Yeah, he loved I that know. fucking dope. All man. right, they're gonna cut us off, man. All right, take bro. Care. Be I'll safe. talk to you tomorrow. Man. I'll holler at you and uh, take care, man. And uh, yeah, you know, stay up. All right, <laughs> keep bye. driving. Stay healthy. All right, later. It's been a long goddamn uh, video, man. But we did cover a lot of stuff, man. You know, we did. All right, enough for today, baby.